here's a, something that might be of interest to uh, stair builders. And when I say that, the, the regular do-it-yourselfer might not find as much value in this, but someone who builds a lot of stairs uh, just might. And that is the riser. Uh, you can see here that the riser is sitting directly on top of the stair stringer and which could create a problem if the stair stringer shrinks. Now you're probably not going to have this this problem if you're using engineered lumber, but uh, you might have it if you're using a uh, regular construction standard. And that is, of course, because stair stringers will actually shrink. And I know this is going to sound shocking to some of you, guys and gals out there, but I've actually seen a 2 by 12, which is 11 and a half inches, uh, shrink down to 11 inches. Uh, 11 and an eighth isn't uncommon. So you can imagine as the stair stringers shrink, as the um, moisture starts to uh, evaporate out of them, uh, they'll actually shrink. And if this is the case and I've seen this a few times and this is the trick I want to share with you I've actually seen them shrink and plywood and oriented strand board this stuff doesn't shrink um, and why I should say it expands I've seen it expand plenty of times so I've rarely seen it shrink um, the plywood will actually stay the same size as the stair stringers shrink uh, I've actually seen it put pressure on the stair treads I've actually seen it push the riser will actually push the stair tread up, you know, the, the riser that's underneath the stair tread. So if you have a riser underneath the stair tread, it will actually push it up a little bit as the stair stringer um, starts to shrink. However, I do have a suggestion, and that would be to leave a gap underneath the riser, not at the top of the riser. Leave a gap underneath the riser. So, for example, if you have a seven and a half inch rise, um, wouldn't be a bad idea to cut all of your risers at seven and three eighths or even seven and a quarter inches. Mind you, the tread, if you're using um, the minimum size tread uh, for a stairway like this out of plywood or OSB, I would imagine would be three quarters of an inch. So the stair tread is going to cover the gap up that uh, you're going to um, get by cutting the riser a little shorter <clears throat> and I've been doing this for years and it really has made a big difference in the overall product of the stairs especially like I said as lumber starts to shrink um, pushing the uh, forcing the risers up and creating a pocket um, I mean let's face it once these risers um, get pushed up they will create a gap between the bottom of the stair tread at the front of the stairway and of course this gap could lead to those horrible noises referred to as squeaking stairs so again I hope this helps this is definitely something that I used for a long period of time and obviously still would if I was going to build a stairway now this particular stairway I used here was for an example in one of my books and uh, obviously felt a need to make it look as neat or as tight as I possibly could. Uh, however, I would not use this particular method um, for building a stairway. I would always leave a little gap there um, just in case the lumber shrinks. Like I said, remember engineered lumber um, doesn't shrink or at least I haven't seen it shrink yet. Um, like I said, this stuff expands. It definitely will expand when wet, but uh, as far as shrinking, like regular construction standard 2x12s, 2x6s, um, probably won't end up happening. So again, conventional standard, construction standard lumber can shrink under the right circumstances and can shrink a lot under the wrong circumstances. Um, the more heat in the air, the more this, uh, the hotter the temperatures, I should say, the more this lumber is going to shrink and, of course, take a beating where the engineered lumber plywood OSB might not.